Baylor football coach Dave Aranda with me, 365 Sports. How do you approach this last week with so much, I mean, the future, offseason, trying to win a game? Is it kind of a, a mixture of many things on your mind right now? It could be. Uh, you try very hard for it not to be. We talked about in um, our staff meeting this, this morning, you know, it's really almost kind of like a spiritual practice because you have to focus on this moment right here, right now. You know, uh, I think it's true with our players uh, at the end of the year. And, um, you know, we, there's guys being recruited right now. And, um, um, you know, we're trying to recruit them too, guys that are on our team. And then um, other people are trying to recruit them. And then there's for sure the transfer portal window is going to open. And then, you know, um, you know, what's next for the guys that are done playing and just their, you know, I didn't get the the bowl invite that I wanted. Um, what's, what am I going to do with my life? You know, all those thoughts creep in for coaches. It's, um, you know, what's next week looking like? What's the recruiting going to be like? All of that, all of it. And so, you know, to bring it all back into fate, like right here, this moment, right now, Let's, you know, we want to win the game, but let's win the next 10 minutes. Let's win, the, you know, we're in present in this moment. I think it very much has to be that. I, know, I imagine people have written books about that. If we do it good, maybe we could write a book too. Caden Jenkins last week put out a couple of social media about respect my decision mm -hmm. and eventually I'm all in. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I guess that's about maybe him being taken care of in the future mm -hmm. uh, and wanting to see what the future holds. What mm -hmm. was that like here? inside the building good yeah i think the um the last couple weeks there's been um well every week there's talks one-on-one -on -one with coaches and players that have nothing to do with ball that at school off the field family um and then uh you know lately here money's been a part of that and so um expectation want or wish you know, and so um, all of that comes into play. And so, you know, for us on our, on our side of it is like, what's the, you know, um, what's the reality? And a lot of times the reality can be in, can be lost in the, um, the mist and fog of, uh, of uh, this is what I heard. This mm -hmm. is what was posted. This was uh, what a high school coach said. This is what a seven-on-seven -seven coach said. And so I think if there's, if we could use the term negotiations, if there is negotiations with uh, an assistant coach contract, there there is kind of, um, I don't know, I think there's rules. <laughs> so there's rules that you go by. And there has to be kind of fact enters into it and everything else. And I think with this, there's... You know, um, there's not so much. And so I think the, you know, for us to kind of have those conversations a long time back all the way through is a way to kind of, you know, whoever the, the bigger picture is that if someone's in a valley or someone's in a pit, we want to be in the pit with them. If um, we want to know the tries and the efforts they've come to get out of the pit. If someone has this wish or desire, we want to know that they do that, and we want to be there trying to advocate for them. And so I think all of this gives us a clearer picture of the reality as we best can know it, and that gives us the chance then to address that. We have Jeremy Fudge on today mm -hmm. uh, on the show this afternoon to kind of explain what is apparently a change in the NIL for Baylor. Mm -hmm. How much of that was something that you agreed with? Well, I know you can't get too deep into mm -hmm. it, but something that needed to change, how much of that was something that you'd rather not change and you just have to realize that this program needs a, a adrenaline rush? Oh, no, I feel it very much needs to change. And um, I just think the, um, yeah, it very much needs to change. I think when you look at the, I know, I know we're being recorded, so it's hard for for me probably a little bit more than you to speak on it mm -hmm. but i think for these for this change to happen we're one of the few teams um in our league or possibly in all of it that haven't changed 
you know. And so for us to have this change is really important. And so I think that, um, you know, to, to, to do all this and then to do it in such a way that, um, to do it in such a way that uh, you, you're still valuing people is just the, I think that's the, the only, the only concern I would have, I think it's very necessary and we need to do it. The only concern I would have would be that um, it would turn, it would turn, um, it would turn us into a, tran a transaction. And um, while that is at the heart of what it is, we can't act like that. And we can't make people feel like that because they're just kids. And so I think it's, uh, I think to, to hold the tension of both sides, of both the success and ego and power and money on one, and then love and, and mercy and empathy on the other, we have to be right in the middle of that. Let me ask you this. You have a contract here mm -hmm. and, and have one game left in the regular season. We know how difficult this has been. Mm -hmm. and, and then you see this change in the NIL. Is this part of you also embracing what needs to be done for you to be the one that finishes and turns this thing around? Uh, I don't know. Well, probably so. I, I would not look at it like this is like being dragged and pulled into right. it. I would look at it as all of it, all like, you know, all of it is an opportunity to, um, to, uh, I hate to say grow, but it is an opportunity to be better. I don't know. I, I just think like, I think the, um, Julio Norwich says first the fall and then the recovery from the fall and both are the mercy of God. And I just think like you have to embrace all of it from the beginning. So whether it's the things that are like you or the things that are way opposite from you, you have to, in the, in the beginning, you have to say yes to all of it. And so I just think that this is part of that, you know? And I think like the, um, the, the opportunity for me to, um, uh, to be better in this space and to, you know, I just think a lot of the guys I feel that were really took off with it, took off with this, in the beginning, um, you know, I look back and, and I should have pushed harder for it in the beginning. Um, I think my hesitation in it, I think we've talked about. Mm -hmm. And so I think to, to learn from that and to, and to be better is, um, is way um, acknowledged on my side. If you don't mind me asking, do you expect to be the one that turns this around? Oh, I hope so. Yeah, I, you know, I, I hope so. I think that... Um, you know, any the um, any time you have a losing season, you, know, you have a season prior yep. where you lost, and then you have a season like this where, you know, unfortunately we're losing. You know, the reality says that you wouldn't be back, and so I think that's that's all understood. I think the um, you know from me and where my heart is and where. Um, you know, my, my value is in our people here and the connection and the team. And I just feel those things are really strong. And I, I'm hopeful that those can be things we can build upon. What happened to reliable, violent offense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that we struggled in the beginning to run the ball. And I just think that uh, that led to um, some young people playing. And then that led to, um, you know, this young guy has this mistake compiled by now. This young guy has got that mistake. And then that compiles to, are we any good? Is this even going to work? And then you just add so on and so forth. And so you stop the bleeding with um, uh, kind of a, if the spotlight's on the run game, then, you know, there's a lot of blood there. And so you have to take the spotlight off of it and then work on it kind of in the dark and then get the, the, the throws out faster to get quick bubble screens and, and line throws that can, that can take the place of the runs while, and so the spotlight's on that. So that hopefully the run game can get to a point where you can move it, the spotlight back to the run game. And so there's been some of that here at the end of the year. Um, I was, we were all hoping for a lot more on this past Saturday. And so 
uh, we've got one more game to try to get more. You've made your career, career out of defense. Yes. How much does this hurt when you have another performance like that against TCU? You, I, I know in the post game you said it, inexcusable yeah. in some cases. Yeah. How much does that hurt? Because that's what you're. Yeah, that's supposed to be your core. Right. Yeah. It does. It hurts. And you know, I first hurt for Palich because I, you know, I, I just see, um, you know, I think it was after the K State game. It took him till Monday for him to look me in my eyes. You know. And so I just know that he wears it really strong and he's trying and and uh, I have to help him better. I have to help him more, you know. And so um, I just think that the um, the improvements that were made, there is a stretch there where I think Houston included, Iowa State, where we weren't winning, but we were playing better. Um, I think that has that has turned here these last two weeks and it's been unfortunate. Uh, to see, I think some of that's been compiled or uh, pushed to the brink here with injuries, you know, and that may be the case again with linebackers this for this next game. But with all of that, I mean, we got to get results regardless. And so, you know, we've got another opportunity versus a really good team that is um, a really strong identity. And so, there should be no mistaking what we're going to get, uh, we got to stop it. Yeah, I, on pilots, you said I need to help him more. Mm -hmm. Would would that not have been something Not mm -hmm. you could have done sooner? Mm -hmm. Or you wanted to let him throw him out in the swimming pool like a kid and, and see what he can do? No, there's all different levels of, I mean, there's been, I've been in all of it from the beginning with him. And I just think that, uh, you know, with, for every fact, there's at least double the nuance and so it's the nuances that are those little things become big things when it gets to a game. And so let's say I'm in the meeting and we're talking about this or that and we're deciding on these couple plays, you know, and then I go to the offensive meeting or then I go to a, a I'm pulled to something else or, you know, I'm doing this or I'm so I'm not in it with, hey, the details of these or that. I will come back and I'll look at like, here's all the fits. Here's all the things. But then still. You know, if it was, you know, um, you know, there's there is like a, a science, a scientific um, kind of detailed approach in going through things. But then there's also like an artistic approach as well. So the scientific things I can help a little bit easier. Like, hey, here's the method. Here's the here's the way we used to do it. Here's how we detail stuff. Here's the Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. You know, here's that. Here's how we, you know, um, whatever the the reps that we're getting here's how we and here's how we self scout and here's how we opponent scout and all that it's the the artistic side of it right um you know it's whether it's to, to script uh, i'm gonna script a little bit more of this or i'm gonna script i need a little bit more of that or i'm gonna put this in a walkthrough i'm gonna put this in a seven on seven or i'm gonna, on the field i'm gonna call this i'm gonna call that there's something about you know if you're a jazz musician when to kind of go off and when to stay with the rest of the melody. There's those things. And those things are harder to teach than the others. My last thing to you, as head coach, uh, there's a lot of things on your plate that otherwise weren't as a coordinator mm -hmm. or an assistant coach. Mm -hmm. Has constructing the roster been one of the more difficult things that you've had to learn that on the defensive side, that's what you had to focus on, that side of the ball. But right. constructing the depth and how this thing is methodically put together, has that something you've had to learn quite a bit? And has it been difficult or more difficult than you thought? No, I think that um, I think there's just been different levels with, you know, if this is if there's I'm trying to think of the words to say this, if um, so much of of this has been just um, colored by NIL. And so if there are people that are paying people for visits or paying people to come to this school or that school, um, and then, you know, we're not one of them, then that, that colors your roster. Why weren't you one of them? Just because of just... The, the struggle of dealing with it? No, I just think that, I mean, that, you know, that you're not, I just think that I, um, whether it's it's being really upfront with saying, hey, 
I don't even, uh, we don't even really know you, but come to school and we'll pay you, you know, 40 grand or 50 grand. There was never really that ability to do that. And then two, it would be, you know, we always looked at NIL for people on our team, not to entice people mm -hmm. to come to school, not to use it as a recruiting tool. And, but I think that that's been, that's not been the case for just for a lot of folks. Dave Aranda, Baylor football coach, 365 Sports. All right, Dave Aranda with us.